of God. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ain't nothing wrong with giving God the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. I dare you to praise God for your mass on this evening. Glory be to God. Anybody feel like praising on this evening? Well, it's all right if you don't feel like praise because the anointing is already on the prayer. Amen. In Daniel 10 and 12, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. And body of Christ, I came to encourage you on this evening because the scripture tells me that our prayers is heard from the first day and there is an angel that is coming to get what we speak. Do you believe that on this evening? I am here to declare tonight the enemy had 21 days. He might have held it up, but he cannot stop God. Hallelujah. That is great news, body of Christ, because we've been going before the Lord, and we've been praying, and now he has given us decorative power where we can command it. So anybody ready to command their healing on tonight? Are you ready to command your breakthrough on tonight? Are you ready to command your deliverance on tonight? Harvest! Reveal yourself in the Jesus name. Laborers, come now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me my healing. Give me my peace. Give me my joy. Give me my breakthrough. Give me my deliverance. I don't know about you, but if you got the spirit like Caleb had, he said, give me this mountain. Sometimes you got to start speaking it. We've been speaking our destruction. We've been speaking pain. We've been speaking doubt. We've been speaking disbelief. Speak your healing. Speak your breakthrough. Declare it. Decree it. And it shall be established. The Lord said he's going to increase what we speak. He's going to manifest what we speak. Commanding power is in this place on this evening. Commanding power is in this place on this evening. We command the healing virtue to flow in the mighty name of Jesus. We command the prosperity anointing to flow in the mighty name of Jesus. We command transition in your life this day in the mighty name of Jesus. We command new visions to be formed in the mighty name of Jesus. We command for dreams to begin to be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. Where the believers at on tonight? Where the believers at on tonight? Aren't you tired of just praying? Command that thing and walk it out. God said you can command it because it's in the word. He said the angels are coming for the word. Did you see your healing in the word? Did you see your breakthrough in the word? Did you see, hallelujah, your deliverance in the word? He said the angel was waiting for you to speak it. The angel was waiting to come and catch your word. But the devil was waiting too. So that's why we got to speak it. We got to decree it. We got to declare it. We got to believe it and receive it in the spiritual realm. Amen. Hallelujah. We already put in the sickle. So we believe for 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold in Shekinah glory powerhouse on this evening. Body of Christ. Stop ordering your destruction and order your blessing. Order it on tonight. Place an order before the Lord. Lord, we order in healing. Lord, we order in breakthrough. Lord, we order restoration. We saw it in your word. Hallelujah. In your word, we saw it, Lord God. When that locust plague happened, then the Lord spoke. 
So we saw it, hallelujah. Everything is done by a spoken word. This world was created by a spoken word. The angels is waiting for you to speak a word, amen. Strengthen us, Lord God. Let peace be on tonight. Let peace be on to us on tonight. I'm sorry, body of Christ, but I'm excited about this thing because he's gonna increase what I speak what I speak and I'm going to speak it on your behalf whether you believe it or not he's going to produce the fruit of my lips on tonight that your body will be healed in the name of Jesus that your breakthrough is going to come forth in the name of Jesus that your mind is going to be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah the year of establishment for Shekinah glory powerhouse anybody believe that we decree it and it shall be established. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit, we order so that the angels who have charge over us can come and get our words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, that is great news to me, body of Christ. That's great news to me, body of Christ. Laborers, come now, faithful laborers, because we're going to gather the harvest. Hallelujah, hallelujah, submit to the plan, body of Christ. It's a new day, the harvest is ready, but are you ready to gather it? Are you ready to speak it? Are you ready to believe it? Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for tangible proof of miracles being manifested in this season. Holy Spirit, we divorce the old so that we can marry the new, hallelujah, Jesus. We believe our strength is going to be bring forth as the new day. And we're going to be able to dream again. Amen. Anybody want to dream again? Do you want your dreams to be manifested? The man of God said the only reason that you are still here is because you still have purpose. You got to dream again, body of Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, we praise you in advance as if it's already been done. Amen. Hallelujah, set a watch over our mouth, Lord God, so that we might not sin against you. Forgive any idle word that we may have speak before this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You have created us to be fruitful and to multiply so that we can replenish on this earth. Hallelujah, Jesus, multiply that which we speak in this season, Lord God. Let generational wealth hit the operational account in the name of Jesus. Let generational wealth hit the benevolence count in the name of Jesus so that we can continue to be debt free in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord God. We praise you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We magnify you, Holy Spirit. We need your Shekinah glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. When the enemy came in like a flood, the Lord raised the standards, body of Christ. And this is why we ought to praise him. Hallelujah. One can only chase a thousand, but two ten thousand. Anybody willing to agree with me in this season that we can annihilate the spirit of poverty, that we can annihilate the enemy. Hallelujah. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Poverty, demon, prosperity, anointing consume you. Holy Spirit, let your blessings flow like a river. Promises be manifested in the mighty name of Jesus. Fruits are added to our account. We believe the great rewards. Body of Christ, praise ye the Lord. The prayer was more declaration on tonight because we believe God to manifest in this season. This is the year of establishment. This is not the year for us to play with God. God is real. Jesus is real. And he is going to perform the counsel of his messenger. Amen. Oh, come on now, Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Come on and give God a great praise. Oh, truly our God is worthy of the praise. Our God is worthy of the honor. Oh, come on, lift your voices. Oh, come on, put those hands together. Render a praise to the thrice holy God. And like we say in Shekinah glory, 
have a house. We have a praise that magnifies our God, that simply gives due diligence and reverence to the mighty God that we serve. It's a very simple praise. And it goes, nobody, no, nobody greater. Nobody, no, nobody greater. Nobody, no, nobody greater. Nobody, no, nobody greater. Come on, you say nobody. Nobody, no, nobody greater. Come on, you say nobody. Nobody, no, nobody greater. Shekinah kind of glory powerhouse say. Nobody, no, nobody greater. This is our praise. Nobody. Nobody, no, nobody greater. Stay right there. Say nobody. Nobody, no, nobody greater. Come on, nobody greater. Nobody.
partaker of his greatness praise tonight. of your greatness. I'm a witness of your greatness. I'm a conduit of your greatness. I'm a vessel of your greatness. God is what I stand upon. My faith is ever growing. I live by faith. I declare by faith. I'll stop at that abbreviated portion. You may be seated. We're going to ask you to get paper pens as this word will be more instructed tonight than it will be imparted. Impartation. I'm not, I'm not focusing on trying to impart. I'm Tonight, I'm focusing on instructing a people who want to hear from God. You know, sometimes the clouds can bring a certain look and it makes us forget things. There are times when smoke can cover an area and we cannot see. And there are many smoke screens that's out there right now that's messing God's people up because they're finding themselves being able to be comfortable in situation in which they cannot see. So I was talking to the Lord and find, trying to find out what was he going to instruct through me tonight. And I'm taking me over to the book of James and let's go over to, I'm going over to James, the third chapter and I'm here in the Amplified. Now I'm reading Amplified, rarely do I read anything other than King James across the mic, but I study all books and Amplified, I think brings a greater clarity for what I want to say. Not many of you should become teachers. James chapter 3, verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, self-constituted censors, and reprovers of others. My brethren, for you know that we teachers will be judged by a higher standard and with greater severity than other people. Thus we assume the greater accountability and the more condemnation. For we all often stumble and fall and offend in many things. And if anyone does not offend in speech, neither says the wrong things, he is a fully developed character and a perfect man, able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. If we set bits in the horse's mouth to make them obey us, we can turn their whole bodies about Likewise, look at the ships. Though they are so great and are driven by rough winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the impulse of the helmsman's determined. Even so, the tongue is a little member and it can boast of great things. See how much wood or how great a force a tiny spark can set ablaze. And the tongue 
feels a fire. I want to start verse 6 again. And the tongue feels a fire. The tongue is a world of wickedness set among our members, contaminating and depraving the whole body and setting on fire the wheel of birth, the cycle of man's nature, being itself ignited by hell, Gehenna. For every beast, every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea animal can be tamed has been tamed by human genius nature. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. It is a restless, undisciplined, irreconcilable evil full of deadly poisons. With it we bless the Lord and Father and with it we curse men who were made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes forth blessings and curses. These things, my brother, ought not to be so. Does a fountain send forth simultaneously from the same opening fresh water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olives or grapevine figs? Neither can a salt spring furnish fresh water. <laughs> who is there among you who is wise and intelligent? Then let him by his noble living show forth his good works with the unobstructive humility, which is the proper attribute of true wisdom. And you can finish reading in your own time. I just wanted to set you up and, and get you started. And I need you to recognize, not Pastor David said, but it's in the book in James, the third chapter, that your tongue can create a world of trouble for you. This tells me that the use of tongues improperly, I'm talking about speaking the wrong word or not using the tongue, both can adversely affect you. Many times we should be speaking and we don't say anything. So I want you to focus on what the Holy Spirit is saying to you tonight as I speak to you. It's a great word. I, I believe it's a great word. I know it is because the Holy Spirit gave it to me and he meant for us to go somewhere with it. So I need you to listen. Somebody said, listen. Amen. Tell them I need them to learn. Amen. But more than that, I need you to apply wisdom to what you hear and take good notes. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14 says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. My topic is force multiplier. Carnal having the nature of flesh, animal appetites and arousals, governed by our human nature, not by the spirit of God. People who are comfortable living with depravity. People who don't mind not having enough. It pertains to the fle flesh, the body. But I want you to understand something, that as I use carnal tonight, don't shoot all the way over there to sexual appetite and deviant behavior and stuff like that. Keep it in the middle of the road. Are y'all understanding me? Don't go extreme. Tell your neighbor, don't go extreme. Because all ye yet and are carnal. The carnal mind, the Bible says in Romans 8 and 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Let's look and see what 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says. And our brethren could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal, as babes in Christ. He goes to verse 3, says, For you are still carnal, for where there is envy, strife, and division among you, are ye not carnal and behaving like mere men? But when one says, I am a Paul, and another says, I am a Paulus, are ye not carnal? He writes in the second letter to the church at Corinth in chapter 10 and verse 4 he says for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in or through God for pulling down strongholds carnality loves to hinge itself 
what an old man said. And when it does that, it will limit or defeat a person. That person will not want to change because they're going to be carnal. And a carnal Christian is a bad testimony. You see, when people are leaning toward their carnal side, they seek comfort. They look for the easy way of escape. They don't really want the lessons of endurance, perseverance, or fortitude. They don't want to go through anything. No, they don't want faith to find the perfect work in them. They, they, they don't want that. They don't want that different level of maturity because it calls for endurance. But my Bible tells me after they had patiently endured that he what? Obtained the promise. See, the Hebrew, the sixth chapter, verse 14, reads like this. Surely, blessing thy bless thee, multiplying, I'll multiply thee. Verse 15 says, Hebrews 6, 15, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Somebody said, force multiplier. And if you go down a little bit further, I'm going somewhere now. Now I'm getting ready to start building this thing. But, but if you read a little further in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and you get down to verse 18, it tells you that it is impossible for God to lie. Yet many of you are believing lies relative to your situation. And God cannot lie according to Titus 1 and 2. God cannot lie. Say that. Make your mouth say it again. So if I'm believing a lie, say it. I'm giving place to the devil. I'm talking about force multiplier because a, a lie is a force multiplier. They can lie about one something. Are you hearing me? It opens a gateway for them to bring up everything about you that somebody ever knew. Begin to multiply negativity against you off of a lie. Because a lie has power. Somebody say a lie has power. But most people don't want to acknowledge who the father of lies is. But let's write it down in our notes. John 8 chapter verse 44. Year of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Saints, I come to challenge you tonight to tell you it's time for you to stop believing the lie. The enemy has told you you're not coming out, and God been told you you're already out. Now, one is a lie. Somebody, it's impossible for God to lie, and God cannot lie, yet you're believing. Because the enemy knows that he can use a lie as a force multiplier against you. Because you'll start doubting God. Because this one thing didn't happen. But you're not counting the 40 things that did. You're not talking about what God did do. You're not even recognizing the truth. You know why? Because just in a perspective manner, a lie lives longer than the truth. When people want that lie to live. Now, truth is eternal. It doesn't go anywhere, so I'm not stupid to understand that. But when people want to perpetuate a lie, come on, tell the truth. They'll push it, and the right ear is here. They will push it. And after a while, that lie becomes a lie. That keeps becoming a lie. And after a while, it's lied on so much that somebody said it's got to be truth because too many people tell. I wish I had real people up in here. See, the enemy told somebody they're not coming out. But I come to tell somebody you're already out. The problem is you believe in a lie, so you're looking with the eyes of a lie. You're looking into a lie, wanting to see the truth. And you can't extract that. I'm going to teach tonight, huh? I'm going to take my time, tell you, maybe it's going to take your time. So when the Lord gave me this, and I was listening and trying to figure out how I was going to give this word relative to force multiplier, I thought I would entitle it Becoming a Force Multiplier. But then I was working in the yard yesterday, and the Holy Spirit began to illuminate to me, and he said, no, 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 no. Not becoming a force multiplier, because they are already force multipliers, but the question is, 
whose forces, my goodness, are they multiplying? <laughs> See, everybody is the force multiplier, but are you multiplying for God? Or are you multiplying for the enemy? And, and, and so, when I look at the word force, and I look at the word forces in the Bible, and I, I know it had many meetings and the plurality of it and all of that, but in Isaiah 60, is where I want to go. Isaiah 60, verse 3, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from forth, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. He says in verse 5, Isaiah 60 and 5, Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles come unto thee. When that word force is used there, it means the resources, my goodness, of the Gentiles. That it means their strength. God is saying, I will use the enemy to bless you. I'll, I'll make it short for you. God will use the enemy to bless you. He wants you blessed. But the problem is y'all stuck in the same old rut, afraid to deal with yourself. Isn't it amazing that your force multiplier is the same person? Let me teach you, let me teach you. The one you hate to forgive is the one that's multiplying all evil against you because you're carrying unforgiveness in your heart. Therefore, anything the enemy want to multiply against you, he can because your heart is not established in forgiveness. Pastor Dave, you better leave that alone. A force multiplier, a force multiplier. A force multiplier is when you take something and you look at the, look at the factors of it or, or, or the strength of it all, and then you add something to it to give you a greater victory. What are you saying? In other words, if the enemy can take one lie, got partial truth in it, but it's a lie cause it's got some lie in it too. And it makes you cave in and quit. Makes you give up on God makes you say i'm not going out there anymore because all they do is talk about you now everybody talking about you is not saying negative things about you but because the enemy has you in that mindset you feel like everyone is your enemy <laughs> forgiveness that force multiplier unforgiveness a force multiplier. When you forgive, it begins to open doors for you. When you forgive, God begins to bless you. When you don't forgive, when you uh, practice unforgiveness, then you harbor all this envy and strife and jealousy and all of the things that the enemy can use against you, he does use them against you. Y'all don't like what I'm saying tonight. But see, the problem is this. God gives you a chance to deal with you. Tell you if he gives you a chance to deal with yourself. And he's saying right then, he's saying, look, I'm going to let you decide who's going to really be the master of your force multiplying. <laughs> so he gives us a chance to examine ourselves and to look at ourselves. And it seems as though we forgot Proverbs, the 28th chapter and verse 13. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. When he's talking about whoever covers his sin, he, in that particular passage there, he means that you're concealing your sin. And you won't confess them to him. But he said, I got a twofold mandate. You must confess and forsake. Say those two words for me. Then you'll find mercy. Tell him. That he told us in Psalm 66 and 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, then the Lord will not hear me. See, see you, everybody want to blame the devil, and they want to blame the devil for what they're going through. And God said, No, no, the force multiplier starts with you. 
by the establishment of your heart. Oh, he's about to go there now. Tell him he's about to go there. Oh, I gave you the easy stuff. Then I gave you the easy stuff relative to your heart. But we're about to talk about something now that, that just seemed to shut the church down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, I like to sing, and then they be like, well, you sing a secular song from behind the book board? I, I, I will. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just singing it because you can relate to it. OJ is singing. For the love of what? Money. Is that what it says? Yeah. For the love of what? Money. I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to mess with it tonight. What he says in Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 38. Somebody say a force multiplier. A force multiplier. Now write this down. Say giving, giving. is a force multiplier. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. And running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Somebody say give. Yeah. So then the Lord asked a relative question. And it, it amazes me how people want to debate about this Old Testament and this, this, this. But. Again, I tell anybody, tithing is mentioned in the Bible. If you go to Matthew 23 and 23, you'll see it in red writing where Jesus mentioned the word tithe. So it wasn't made obsolete with Jesus Christ. I just need to give that piece of information out there. Is that all right? But now I'm going to the book of Malachi. Jay Neighbor, people don't like that book. So he goes in Malachi. I'm talking about force multiplier. Now, y'all all right? Jay Neighbor, money is a force multiplier. But, but help me to say this, and I need you to say it loud. I know you got your mask on. I, I know you're socially distanced, and distant, practicing social distance and everything. But I need you to say it loud. I, I need you to hear. I'm going to say it the first time, then I want you to say it. Broke people easily become broken people. Is it true? Is it true? When people start looking at that they have minimal resources, it begins to break them. It erodes their confidence in God. I don't have real people now. They faint on God. You have people that work and work and work trying to get a dollar, but I'm here to tell you right now, that dollar going to make you hollow. Are you hearing me? Because you're going the wrong way. There's no way that you can think that God sent you in the enemy's camp to work for the enemy to be blessed. God blesses his own people. He takes care. He said the wealth of the sinner, come on now, is laid up for the righteous of the just. Am I right? God already has something. Y'all don't like me right now, but put your hands together. I'm going to stomp that out of here. Put your hands together right now. I knew y'all wouldn't like it. I ain't even started teaching it yet. Because once the enemy knows some insights and wisdom, some principles are going to come into play. He gets afraid. Malachi 3.8, he says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? He answered them. In tithe and offering. He answered them. And then he gave them their outcome. Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. How are we going to sit here and act like we can skip the scripture? The scripture cannot be broken. He said, bring ye all the time. And that means that if he's saying that, it means that they wasn't bringing all the time. That they were hidden and missing. Skipping. I mean, Y'all don't like me right now. Skipping and missing. It. And you're trying to make it be biblical days, but I'm talking to you right now. Somebody said right now. The Lord said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat or resources in my house. Are y'all hearing me? And prove me now, here with says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it. He says, and, conjunction, and, putting it together. When you bring me all the tithes, somebody say all the time. Somebody said, not partial tithing, not hidden and missing. See, you wonder why the devourer hasn't been root. Uh, rooted out of your life or uh, uprooted it's because that partiality y'all didn't like me oh I felt that wrong 
didn't hurt though. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And she shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine catch up fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Then he goes to verse 13, and this is where I, I love teaching. I love this more than verse 8. Your words have been stout against me, says the Lord. Yet ye say, what have we spoken so much against thee? The Lord came back, he answered, and he said, you said it's vain to serve God. It is vain to serve God. Yeah, yeah, you want, all you want to measure God by is what your bank account say, what your checkbook say, what your financial situation and condition say. And so you run around and you talking to God. He said, God, I'm just going to be honest with you. But it seemed like it's vanity in serving you. Why do the wicked seem to prosper, God? And when I, your servant, seem to be going to hold you, you said it to him. Are y'all hearing it? And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? Or that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea. They that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. <laughs> Wrong set of eyes. Looking in somebody else's wallet. Looking at somebody else's pocketbook. Instead of waiting your time out. Then my Bible breaks down that passage. And all of a sudden, it says the book of remembrance. Not, probably not in all your Bibles, but it's in mine. The book of remembrance. Why is that in my Bible? Because sometimes you got to go back and remember when God brought you out. You got to go back and look at when the good hand of the Lord moved on, on your faith in your favor and changed your situation and your circumstance. It might not was last year. It could have been five years ago. It could have been 20 years ago. But God did do it. And God said, what is in your book of remembrance? What do you remember about me? You saying it's vain to serve me because you didn't get your most immediate needs met right now financially. Remember now, this is all about money. This is all about money. This is all about, this is not spiritual, spirituality. Spirituality came into play because money, come on now, is a force multiplier. So when you had the wrong perspective on your money, it led over into your spirituality. It gave place to the devil when you were told neither give place to the devil. But when you don't tithe and give offering and return the offering like you should, you, be, you give the devil an opportunity to be a force multiplier in your life. Y'all to see y'all faces, it's precious too. I can imagine what y'all looking at at home, those of you that still tune in because you thinking that you all right, but perhaps you're not. Because you have to understand something. Do you really give diligence to make sure that God's house is taken care of? God said, remember what you came out of. Remember what he brought you out of. Don't look at where you're at right now. Don't take that talking about you don't have no money right now. When you had worse days, come on, years ago. I wish I had real people. I don't have real people yet. Your worst days are not right now. Maybe it is for somebody. I, I, I can't conclusively say that, but I, I, I've seen where we, most of us come from. Am I right? And, and I've seen where we see kids waste, come on now, what we desire to have. I said a book of remembrance. Somebody said a book of remembrance. I don't have to go far for the book of remembrance for Pastor Billy Davis. See, when I go to the book of remembrance, all I have to do is pull up BWB2. Uh, my book of remembrance is real simple that God said I was going to build without begging and that I was going to build without barring this whole ministry was going to do it but God gave me the mandate and the assignment and when I brought the assignment back to the people many people walked with me no more they left because they thought I was a lunatic but I tell you right now I'm standing here and God has built without us begging and he has built without us borrowing. Y'all tired of the testimony, but that's in my book of remembrance. So every time the enemy thinks that he can play with my mind and try to tell me what God didn't do, 
trying to tell me what God won't do. I want to tell somebody else, I don't care how bad your case is, if God put you in a debt-free house, he already had a debt-free plan for you, but you got to walk it out. You got to believe God. You got to know that you're serving God, and you got to be right by God. My goodness. <laughs> BWB2. He didn't just let me jump there. I sidebar without permission, didn't I? Oops, my bad. <laughs> you see, BWB2, there was something that I remember. And I've met some good people on this particular time. And it was a long time ago. Somebody said a long time ago. A long time ago, God showed me something. And I didn't get the revelation of it until today. God said in 2004, said I told you to go home I had a work for you to do he told me that in 97 never knowing it would be pastor but in 2004 Minister Thompson can attest to Prophet Tony can attest to the Lord said I want you to have a tent revival. I didn't have a building. Hear me with clarity because I'm, te I'm teaching you something. God didn't let me own a building first, but he let me own a tent. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. I, I didn't get what I was looking for at first. At first, I we had ownership of the tent, but we didn't own the property. God let us buy and purchase a tent. Are you hearing me? We had a huge tent. Huge tent. Had our own chairs. We had everything. We could take it anywhere and do anything we wanted to do. And then God all of a sudden said, hold on a minute. You can't say that this property is mine if the bank has a deed on it. So God began to show me, hold on a minute. You're going to have to purchase this property. You can't have it financed. You got to purchase it. God gave us the resources. I'm about to teach this thing right now. He gave us the resources and we purchased the property. We not only now, we have a tent and we have our property, but we don't have a building. Tell your neighbor, sometime you got to walk it out. See, the force multiplier is this, is that I remain faithful. Come on now. My faithfulness was a force multiplier that God said, you got to hang in there, Billy Davis. And if you just hang in there, what you're believing me for shall come to pass. My word tonight is for somebody, and I'm not trying to excite you, but I believe that God going to bless you the same way he blessed me. Delayed, but not denied. I wish I had a real church. Delayed, but not denied. You had to go through it, but it didn't kill you. The Lord said, look, let them know that when he says something, it comes to pass. You finish reading Malachi, the third chapter, but you go to verse 18. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. I look at the, how the force multiplier has come in and divided the flock since Michael. People say they, people say they belong to the ministry, but it's lip service. They have not applied Themselves. And so I want to have you where you don't go home mad trying to discount what God said to you. I'm going to show you something. I told you that money was a force multiplier. How do I know money is a force multiplier? Because if we have it in the ministry, then we can feed the hungry with no struggle. We can clothe the naked with no struggle. We can help people with their rent, uh, mortgage disposition, whatever it is when they come up. We can help because we have the resources. 
Tell him force multiply. Force multiply. Your tithe. Tell him your tithe. And your offering makes that possible. However, when you don't, then you cancel those things. So now you become a force multiplier for us not being able to feed if we needed to. Or clothes, y'all don't like me now. Or, or clothes when we need to. Because you, you're so busy counting your dollar that you forgot the mission. I'm not teaching good right now. No, I'm not teaching good right now. I, I got a lot of people ignoring me tonight. That, 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 that They got other things on their mind and they don't like the truth. But I'm here to tell you right now that God is real. And I want to tell you right now that just because you gave your tithe, returned the tithe, I'm sorry. And if you returned it out of the wrong heart, it's still no good. But... I told you money was a force multiplier. And you said, well, he gave a little old lame example. Let me give you a real one to take home with you. Force multiplier, money. Say that. Force multiplier, money. Say it again. Force money. money is a force multiplier for the devil, too. How are clubs kept open? open? Cover charge. Drinks. Illicit activities. All sewn into by dollars. A force multiplier. That keeps them coming. Oh, it got quiet. You didn't am I? See, it, it, the benefits of clubbing and paying to go in the club are quite obvious when you're there. But the detriment is not. <laughs> you, you, you have an obvious pleasure. Not knowing you're destroying yourself through a force multiplier that you sit there, you took dollars that you didn't, you didn't return your tithe, you didn't do anything with your tithe, but then you supported the kingdom of, oh, I'm not teaching good now. No, nobody wants that. <laughs> no, no, nobody wants that. I, I thought I should just say that. Because many of you, you ask, well, what is the benefits of tithing? What's the benefit of giving? What's the giving off? And what's the benefit of sowing seed? The benefit is simple. You obeyed God's directive. And now your house will be maintained. You tell me, what's the benefit of you clubbing out? You had a good time that night. That night. Hello, somebody. Ex clovers don't like me right now. I said, Ex clovers don't like me right now. Oh, you hear me? But my, my truth is real. I'm, what am I saying? I, I'm saying that how in the world can you tell God, God bless me, but I'm going to make my money force multiply for the devil? Y'all didn't expect force multiplier to come like that, did you? Huh? You didn't expect them to come like that, did you? See, because force multipliers realize when they don't do it for God that they can't be stingy. They understand they have to give out of their deep poverty. Somebody said deep poverty. Second Corinthians chapter 8, you can read all about it. Second Corinthians 8 and 9, read all of it. But he said if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. You know, you got these saints that's been saved for 20 years that's still a $10 saint. If the cost of living escalated, how in the world can your offering not go up? I'm not talking about tithes because tithes are 10. So you're not going to get me to debate. You're not going to get me to do anything with tithes. The tithes of the Lord is holy unto him. What happened is we have people who are stingy towards God. I taught him about getting, getting your get right right. I taught about stinginess. I defined it. Billy Davis' definition. An unwillingness to release money, asset, assets, or even advice based upon a selfish, unfounded reasoning that the measure given or release will cause harm, loss, grief, or discomfort to the releaser. <laughs> Stingy people ignore the situation and need or plight of others. 
They will not allow the compass of their souls to speak. They are reluctant to part with money. Stingy people practice repressing. And they have a false sense of empowerment. Holding on to nothing. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Make sure you understand that I don't give a message with a hidden agenda. I'm very outspoken and very direct. Let me say to the body of Christ at large, you, for the most part, at large, the majority of you are God robbers. Wherein have we robbed thee, Lord, at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse? In tithes and in offerings. If you thought I was going to let it go and just try to move on to making you feel good, I can't do it. Because the same God, my goodness, knows what goes in your hand. He knows what goes through your hand. But he also knows that a tenth of what we touch is his. He knows that. He said, you offer me what you, the kind of God you consider me to be. May offer that. That's your offering. That's what you're saying to God. God, I offer you because this is all that you are to me. You are a $2 God. Oh, no, no, God. You're a $5 God. That's all you are to me. Your offering is reflective of your heart's attitude towards God. You may think that it has to do with this house, but no. This has to do with you. Y'all don't like me right now. You see, money is a force multiplier. And so we all know anywhere that there's lack, there's going to be insufficiency. However, thanks be unto God, who is rich in mercy, grace, who knows that, look, he said, boy, I'm not going to let you fall. They can withhold, but you better lay it to their charge. When you talk to me, you better tell me who is and who's not. Don't play games with it. Don't play games with it. Are you hear me? Because we need to return God his tithe, period, so that he can multiply what's coming into your house. Now, y'all don't like what I'm teaching, and that's fine. Because broke people easily become broken. And I guess I broke the back of some of y'all because I broke the back of poverty tonight. I said I broke poverty's back by some of you getting mad. I don't care nothing about that. When the enemy gets mad, that's a great word. My book told me, woe unto me when men speak well of me. I know I gave a right word when I can see an enemy raise up on a person. And I'm sitting there looking at it and I got to rebuke and still got to try to teach at the same time and annihilate an enemy, you know, as, as a silent marksman. Because what happens is that people find security in performance. Just because you do something don't mean you did it right. We must learn how to be force multipliers that empower God's kingdom that allows God to have glory in through and by what we do. Stop letting your financial disposition or your financial struggle define who God is. <laughs> I need to look at somebody. I need somebody to look at them and tell them you were broke in the beginning. Now don't, don't play with it. Don't play with it. You were broke in the beginning. And then the good hand of the Lord came your way and gave you opportunity. He gave you a job. You were broke in the beginning. You might have to go back to when you're five, six, seven years old, but you were broke in the beginning. It's quiet now. It's quiet now. The poverty demon is strong, but he's not stronger than God. I say the prosperity king is taking over here the power of God 
is present to prosper. He's going to change some mind. He's going to deal with you. You won't sleep well until you do well. When you do well by God, your sleep going to get better. Are y'all hearing me? Until then, God going to talk to you in the hour. But I'm going to want to tell you something right now. Whatever you do, don't let the, the enemy cause you to set your feet in the wrong place. Because that's a snare. And Billy Davis defines a snare as a tethered transgression. A tethered transgression, which means that what? You, you're going to always be tied to it, am I right? You think you're free, but you tell them. All they did is they gave you more rope. <laughs> That's all they did, they gave you more rope. A snare is generally designed to hold in place until the kill can be made. I'm not teaching well tonight. Don't let the enemy snare you by your lack of finances. Are y'all hearing me? One thing I can tell anybody, I know who's going to get from God. God's going to get from Billy Davis. Are you hearing me? God's going to get from me. You know why? Because I know God's going to bless me. And if, when it doesn't come into my hand, you know what? I'm still blessed. When I struggle, I'm still blessed. When I go through, I'm still blessed. You're, you're not understanding what I'm saying. I, I, it's not that I don't go through life because I'm a pastor. I go through life just like y'all go through life. I just handle it different. God, I guess this is a test you want me to take. So let me take it quickly. Let me take it. But I want to finish, God. All my answers in already, God. I believe you, God. So is it going to change tomorrow? Oh, it didn't change the next day. Oh, God, it's going to change tomorrow. It didn't change that day. But I keep asking, God, it's going to change tomorrow. Because one day change is coming. And I know when change comes, it's all over. And I wish I had a body of believers that know how to respond to God when God tells them, you know I arrested you. You know I arrested you. You know I called you to accountability. Now give me some praise and give me some glory. Be thou exalted, most high. Be thou exalted, most high. Be thou exalted, most high. Father God, we thank you for your word that you give to your people tonight. God letting them know that they're force multipliers either for you or for the devil, but they're force multipliers. And God, I thank you that you deal with them, God, in their sleep, God, while they're trying to rest. Shake them. I give you praise. I give you honor. And I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace be multiplied until you have a blessed night. God bless you. Force multiplier.